Welcome to Filmora 15 Free Beginners Tutorial Guide, Episode 1. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to download Filmora 15, import your first clips, and navigate the editing dashboard like a pro. I'll break down every section step by step, and you'll see insider pro tips cut in along the way to keep your workflow smooth. We will also be going over basic editing and sound balancing, which I feel is very important to know. Filmora 15 has changed in late 2025, setting the tone for 2026 creators. So let's go through the new layout together. Pro tip number one, always download from Wondershare Filmora's official website. Third-party links risk malware and outdated builds. I have an official link in my description and bio. Head to Wondershare's official website. Click Download for Windows or Mac depending on your system. Filmora 15 runs on Windows 7 or newer, 64-bit, and Mac OS 10.14 or later. Once the installer launches, choose your install location and confirm any plugin options. The wizard is straightforward, and within a minute you'll be ready to open your first project. After clicking Open File, you will get a screen prompt asking for permission to download. Once the download is complete, Filmora will open with its default minimized welcome window. There's a lot to explore here, and we'll cover those details in a later video. For now, let's focus on starting a new project. You can choose a 16.9 aspect ratio for long-form videos, or a 916 aspect ratio for short-form vertical videos. Once you've selected the format that fits your project, simply click New Project to begin. Inside your new project, the media library is where everything starts. Drag and drop your files straight into the library or click Import Media Files to browse. Filmora 15 supports common formats like MP4, MOV, and AVI, plus standard audio like WAV and MP3. Pro tip number two. You can change your project over all project settings by clicking File in the top left. Going down to Project Settings, you can change the aspect ratio, resolution, frame rate, color space, and sample rate. Filmora defaults sample rate to 44.1 because that's the music standard. But since this is a video, even if the only sound is music, set your project to 48. That way the audio stays clean and synced when you export. After import, drag a clip from the library down to the timeline. Video lands on the video track, and your music or dialogue sits on the audio track below. When this prompt pops up, just click Keep Project Settings or Media Settings. That way your timeline stays consistent and you can still export in different formats later. Now let's go over the editing dashboard layout. There are four main sections you'll use every time you edit. Media Panel. This is where all your clips, images, and audio will be, plus Filmora's stock media. Titles, Transitions, Effects, Filters, Stickers, and Templates. Player Panel. Here's the playback window. It shows exactly how your edits look in real time. Timeline Panel. This is the main workspace where you arrange, cut, and layer your video and audio tracks. On the right, you'll find the Settings Panel, where you fine-tune clip details like speed, color, and audio. Quick Intermission. Filmora is free to download, and if you decide to purchase through the link in my bio, me and my family do receive a small percentage of that sale. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really helps support the channel, and I truly appreciate it. While you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Filmora tutorials. And if you have questions, drop them in the comments. I'll either cover them fully in a future video, or turn them into a pro tip segment so everyone can benefit. Some creators mention the toolbar as its own section, and that's totally fine to each their own. As you can see though, the toolbar is actually attached to the timeline. It's packed with useful tools and we'll go over those in detail in a later video. Pro tip number three, if you click the icon on the top right called layout mode, you'll see a few choices. I personally preferred the timeline layout when I was a beginner because it kept all four main panels right in front of me. I still prefer the timeline layout today since it makes larger multi-layered projects easier with more space. And remember, you can adjust the size of each section by hovering your mouse over the thick black dividers, then click, hold, and drag to your preferred size. Let's go over some beginner editing and sound basics. You can add video or audio to the timeline quickly by clicking the plus sign in the lower right corner of any import in the media panel. This red line is called the playhead. It marks your current position in the timeline and controls what you see in the preview. You can use it to make cuts or adjust clips by sliding their edges back and forth. And even if you've made a cut, you can still extend the clip back out, giving you flexibility to fine-tune your edits without losing any footage. When you're mixing audio, the primary sound, whether it's your voice or the music, should sit between negative 3 and negative 6 decibels. That range keeps it strong, clear, and balanced without clipping. 
For background music or sound effects, aim around negative 20 decibels. This way your audience hears the main track front and center, while the supporting sounds stay subtle and don't overpower your mix. In the original clip, the music was exported at about negative 2 decibels since it was treated as the primary audio. That falls right in the ideal negative 3 to negative 6 decibels range for primary audio. But when I imported that clip into this tutorial, I lowered the music to negative 20 decibels. That way you can clearly hear my voice, the primary audio, while the music stays in the background as secondary support. Decibel numbers aren't always something you can type in exactly, which is why on screen it says negative 2. Every audio track is different, so the best way to set levels is by watching the meter. Adjusting the decibel up or down gets you close, and as long as your levels fall within the correct range visually on the meter, you'll have balanced sound. Pro tip number four, use auto normalize audio to keep your sound at the same average loudness. Here's why this matters. Decibels measure peak volume, the loudest moment, while LUS measure the average loudness over time, the way our ears actually hear it. When you normalize, the software automatically adjusts your track so the peaks don't clip and the overall loudness stays consistent. For example, if your audio peaks around negative 3 dB, the average loudness usually lands close to negative 12 LUFS. That's the sweet spot where your voice or main sound is strong and clear, while background audio stays balanced. After normalizing, your audio will be close to the same loudness over time. Still, listen back to be sure peaks don't max out. For example, calm speech versus excited speech can create big differences, and those louder parts may need manual adjustment. That's everything for this first Filmora 15 beginner's tutorial episode. From downloading safely, importing your media, and navigating the dashboard, to making basic edits, balancing sound, and picking up pro tips along the way. You now have the essentials to start creating with confidence. If this helped, please like and subscribe, and leave your questions in the comments. I truly appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.